So welcome back to Fast Freddy RC, and as you can see, it is complete. Um, I had a lot of fun building this kit. I, I just, I wasn't even sure how I was going to build it. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to do the original paint scheme, and I thought, you know what, I got to build it like the box art. So there it is. I mean, I just think this is incredible. Even the old style uh, shocks, which there's a little spring inside here. Uh, same on the other side, and I mean the suspension travel, e even on the back end, is um, is actually pretty good. And I mean this kit looks amazing. So um, before I say anything else, I'm just going to go right into the build, and then uh, we'll come back and I'll give you some tips and tricks of actually how that build process went. Uh, so enjoy the build.
Okay, so let's get into uh, some of the build process in a little bit more depth. So as you can see from the video, the shock mounts are the very first thing that gets built with this kit. Now, I, the very first vehicle I had as a kid was the Blackfoot. Um, so it was very cool to be able to see how this was put together because I didn't realize the shocks or the springs were on the inside, which gives it some suspension, but you're wondering, well, wait a minute, there's no shocks. How does that work? Well, as you can see in the video, it's a, it's a very interesting way of doing the front suspension on this chassis. However, you got to remember it was one of the first racing kits of this kind for Tamiya or for Tamiya and um, because of it there's not a lot of adjustments that you can make with the front suspension so there's this sway bar on, on either side that you can see and the only real adjustment for that is there is a hex nut at the back that you can screw in or or loosen which will pull in the, the frame either forward or back which will allow you to adjust the, the wheels in terms of the cam uh, camber, um, but that's that's it. There's not a lot to that. Um, when it came to the rear, I mean, these are great oil-filled shocks and they are actually the uh, Tamiya Racing shocks, which was nice. So, I mean, you've got quite a bit of suspension and travel there, very similar to the, to the Blackfoot. Now they, you know, in the kit, you have three choices for the pinion gear uh, and spur gear setup. Um, what doesn't isn't seen in the video is that I chose the racing uh, pinion and racing spur gear. So I've set this up for speed. I haven't set it up for torque. I just figure with something like this, I'd rather have the speed. So that's what I've done with the gearbox. And the gearbox is relatively simple to set up. I mean, compared to my original Blackfoot, the only difference is the way the dog bone setup is, because these are actual dog bones as opposed to the old hex nuts that used to wear out. So that's a huge improvement on their end. Um, there's two things, well actually there's three things that I'm not that keen on, but there's, you know, again, this is, this is a re-release of an original kit. Uh, the hardest part of building this kit is going to be the tires. Why do I say that? They are three-piece wheels, which I thought was kind of cool, but there is a centerpiece that has to go into every tire. The fronts weren't as bad, the rears, I couldn't feel my fingers for hours um, after I did the wheels. In fact, I stopped building and, and left it for another day. The amount of, you know, you got to think, this is a very small opening, the wheel's a lot bigger, and you just had to reef on it. And I, in the instructions, it says, you know, pull the tire away and use your finger to push the, the tire inside or the wheel inside the tire. That's great in theory, but just know this. It may seem like you're not going to get it done. It will eventually pop in there. Um, you just have to kind of just keep moving it along, moving it along, moving it along all the way around. And eventually there's enough of it in that it will pop in and then you can attach the other, other tires. But I'd say that took me at least 30 minutes for me just shoving that piece of plastic inside the tire. So that was the hardest part you're going to find with this, with this kit. Now, the only other thing that um, I find... Eh, it's not the greatest, but you know, back in the day when I had my other one, you had your steering servo, and then you had uh, the servo for the three-step speed, three speed controller, which would sit here. With this model, they don't put the three-step speed, well, there is no three-speed, they've replaced it with the electronic speed controller. It now sits where the servo goes, but it's attached to the ser your steering servo with double-sided tape. Eh, I'm the 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 main reason I'm not thrilled with that is if I wanted to make any changes, it's going to be quite the process because now I'm going to have to rip that off and and you know um, you know put on some more or clean it up or it just it was a very very tight fit and that's the other thing I noticed. I mean, if you can see that the speed controller is just inside the frame and it does not give you a lot of play like even the button to set it uh, if you can see that there's a button to set the speed controller i can't see any of the lights with it being there so it's not as easily 
um, accessible as I would like. The other one, which is really interesting, is on the Blackfoot, because there's a lot more uh, room, the receiver would sit here where the driver is on the frog, okay? Well, the receiver, and I've built this exactly how it says, so that, that's, that's okay, but the receiver is sitting on this brace on the underside of it. Now, the, I mean, you can, I don't know if you can see it way down, way down there where my finger is, but that means it's completely open to the elements. So if you did decide to drive through a puddle or any of that, this is going to get soaked. I mean, you're probably going to short it out. So, you know, I'm sure I can put something over it and I may end up putting something over it. I'm not going to, for now, I'll leave it stock, but I don't think it's the greatest placement. On the Blackfoot, it was sitting up here and, you know, there's a lot more height, so it was quite a bit off the ground, which means it was pretty protected. So what I find with the Frog, the electronic components are not um, that well protected. And I did find that to be a very weird place to put the receiver because that is going to expose it to the elements. So I might suggest that if you know that you're going to be doing some mud bogging and really taking it through some you know wet terrain, you might want to put this over a, a plastic bag or try and cover it up before attaching it. Although I still, I thought of doing that, but I don't think that was going to work that successfully. I got to figure something out for that. But again, I'm not going to worry about it for now. Um, and then of course I painted the, the uh, driver figure. Um, I've decided to order the Tamiya, the new Tamiya um, screwdriver set because I have also discovered that the Phillips screwdriver, even though you might think they're a Phillips screw, are actually a JIS, which is Japanese industry standard. So the Phillips screwdrivers actually don't fit that well into the screws. And the reason this became an issue is, I don't know if you can see in the back of his head, there is a long tunnel that goes to the screw. Well, that's, a, that's great, but when you don't have the, the, the right tool, or it's not narrow enough to fit in the hole, and it's a, not the re, it's not a JIS um, screwdriver. It was very very difficult putting that in, and eventually I did. But you know, I've I've just decided that if I'm going to be building more and more, which I am, might as well have the proper equipment to do so. So I'm going to order the Tamiya um, uh, screwdriver set, which actually has a bunch of other cool stuff. Um, and I'll put it in the in the description of the video as well. In terms of tips, if you've got questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to answer them. I said there were three things I wasn't too keen on. Well, there is a fourth, and I had forgotten about this. I had a lot of fun putting this body together, and I, I just I just think this looks incredible. Now, just for fun, I there is one sticker on here that is not the original sticker. And it is that one right there. Fast Eddie bearings. Um, I really like using Fast Eddie bearings because uh, it's just, it, I just like the kits that I've got. And I thought, you know what, I'll, pu I'll put that there. It was kind of a blank space. Why not add my own? So that is the only thing that's on this vehicle that isn't stock. But here's the piece that is um, why it's a bit annoying. I, I, it's, it's, it's not the greatest plan, but then again, when you put this body on the car, you actually should never have to take it off again, which that is a bonus. But if you do want to take it off again, that's going to be tough because when this fits on, you can see there's two on that. There's two posts on, on either side. I'm going to flick that over that post, which it, it comes on rather tight. This one, I have to push forward to then get it in place. But I wouldn't, in some ways, I wouldn't even need the pins because of, as of right now, this is very hard to get it off. So if you're intending on, you know, putting the body on and off, on and off for whatever reason, you're, I think you're gonna find that these things might, the, the Lexan body might split. I know they've got a sort of like aluminum tape, which you can put on uh, on the underside, which I've done on the front. I have not done it here because I don't know. I just seemed a little weird on the other side because it's noticeable. So I didn't do it. But then again, I don't intend on taking the body off. So now that you've seen it, that's probably the last time unless I absolutely have to take it off. It's going to stay on. I don't need it off. 
So I'll put the pins I'll put the pins back in. Just because. But like I said, I don't think I'm gonna do anything with it. And there you go, car complete. So Anyways, I, again, I just had an absolute blast putting that one together. Um, if you've not seen the unboxing video that I did, uh, feel free to go back and see that. I will be putting out another video of it running. I want to do some slow motion shots and just have a bit of fun with it, get the, see the suspension in action. So that one is coming. So also know that if you'd like to see more content, feel free to subscribe because more is definitely coming. Uh, and with that, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm going to go take this for a drive. We'll see you next time.